Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. We're looking at introduction to the Gospels. We've looked at that the Gospel literature is part of it is a literature of stories, but also we have to realise that the Gospels are Greek or Roman biography. Uh, one writer said, "Ancient biographies recount the lives of great leaders, although they include many different characters and stories." Greco-Roman biographies have descri described these characters and stories in the ways that highlighted the featured leader. They defended the leader's ideas and perpetuated awareness of his actions from one generation to another. And the Gospels were similar to ancient biographies in these ways. For example, we also see parallels to some ancient biographies in the fact that Matthew and Luke include birth narratives and all four Gospels detail Jesus' death. The Gospels also follow the convention of ancient biography as they trace the events of Jesus' life. Like other ancient biographers, the Gospel writers arrange the events between Jesus' birth and death in various ways. Sometimes they arrange things chronologically, sometimes they group things according to topic. One writer said, I think it's important to realise at first initially that to recognise that the Gospels are generally chronological. For example, they begin with the baptism by John the Baptist and then you see Jesus being baptised. Then you have Jesus' ministry followed by his arrest, his trial, his crucifixion and resurrection and so on. In an overall sense, there is a chronological order. At the same time, there are places, if you compare two Gospels, there will be sometimes events or warnings might be given in a different order. I think that the only cause of problem if we read the Gospels is intending or claiming to give precise chronological order in every single respect. But most authors and most kinds of narrative actually allow for an author to organise his material by order that's other than the chronological. For example, often we'll see logical order or we'll see topical grouping of subjects. Early Christians, for example, Eusebius, an early 4th century Christian historian and bishop, he notes that the differences in the gospel order was already widely known and early readers didn't have a problem with this because they didn't assume that the strict chronological intention was intended. Dr. Uh, David Redderlings. Um, so we'll go more detail about that uh, 